So anyone who does that, their desires are very easily fulfilled. Mm. The impersonalists who try to avoid everything material may undergo severe austerities, but they miss the opportunity of being engaged in the service of the Lord. Thus, their renunciation is not sufficient for perfection. There are many instances where, following such artificial renunciation, without any contact with devotional service, the impersonalist again fell down and became attracted to material contamination. There are many supposed renouncers, even at the present moment, who officially become sannyasis or renunciants, and outwardly claim that spiritual existence is truth and material existence is untruth. In this way, artificially they make a show of renunciation of the material world. However, because they cannot reach the point of devotional service, they fail to achieve the goal, and they again come back to material activities such as philanthropic work and political agitation. There are many examples of so-called sannyasis who gave up the world as untruth, but again came to the material world because they were not seeking the real repose at the lotus feet of the Lord. In other words, let's say I want to give up something. Huh? What do I give up? Let me give up um, um, eating. Huh? So I'm just going to drink. I'm just going to take liquid food. I'm not going to eat anything. Right? This is artificial. Why is it artificial? Because... I can offer nice foods to the Lord and they become prashada. So why should I give them up? What do I gain from that? Well, it's artificial, you see. The real perfection is to be engaged in the devotional service of the Lord. So if we give up something that can be used in the Lord's devotional service, that's false renunciation. Falguru vairagya, you see. Or... If I give up something artificially, uh, well, it's the same principle. If I give up something that, that uh, looks like sense enjoyment, but actually can be offered to Krishna, then I'm diminishing my devotional service. See, if I start to measure everything in devotional service, measure by terms, in terms of devotional service, that means the more I can increase, the better. So yes, give me a nice house. Yes, give me all kinds of facilities. Yes, give me all kinds of money. Yes, give me a, give me a country. Huh? Fine, give me a planet. Huh? Now here there's a vacant universe over in the next dimension. Can I have that, Krishna? Huh? I'll use it for your devotional service. Oh, no problem. Anything we can use for Krishna's service should not be given up. That's why we don't give up you know, some people say when you become a sannyasi, you have to give up the internet. I actually heard devotees talking about this. If you're a sannyasi, you shouldn't have a computer. You shouldn't have access to the internet. Why? Well, because you might go look at a porn site. Well, but wait a minute. I can go down to the corner magazine store and look at porn. The point is, if I'm actually engaged in devotional service, I won't want to. I won't have any desire for it. Well, why, you know, what's that? Why should I do that? You know, Krishna is far more beautiful than any of these porn stars. Huh? What do I need that for? So even if I have a computer and I have access to the internet, I'm not going to misuse it. I'm going to use it for Krishna. If we didn't have access to the internet, we wouldn't be here right now talking to you. <laughs> we wouldn't be preaching. You wouldn't even know about us. Huh? Because we're not on the internet. So just see, if we were to give that up artificially, our whole, our whole service would be devastated. You see? So that would be nonsense, wouldn't it? Yeah. So why should we accept this artificial renunciation? Huh? That's not real. It's just, it's our own speculation. It's, it's like, you know, actually counterproductive, actually destructive of devotional service. I mean, if you just think about this stuff a little bit, you know, it, it all makes sense. Here he says, one should not give up anything which can be utilized in the service of the Lord. 
That is a secret of devotional service. Anything that can be utilized in advancing Krishna consciousness and devotional service should be accepted. For instance, we are using many machines for the advancement of our present Krishna consciousness movement. Machines like typewriters, dictating machines, tape recorders, microphones, and airplanes. Sometimes people ask us, why are you utilizing material products if you condemn the advancement of material civilization? But actually, we do not condemn. We simply ask people to do whatever they are doing in Krishna consciousness. That is the same principle on which, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna advised Arjuna to utilize his fighting abilities in devotional service. Similarly, we are utilizing these machines for Krishna's service. With such sentiment for Krishna or Krishna consciousness, we can accept everything. If the typewriter can be utilized for advancing our Krishna consciousness movement, we must accept it. Similarly, the dictaphone or any other machine must be used. Our vision is that Krishna is everything. Krishna is the cause and effect, and nothing belongs to us. Krishna's things must be used in the service of Krishna. That is our vision. This does not mean, however, that we should give up the principles of discharging devotional service or neglect abiding by the rules and regulations prescribed therein. In the Nephite stage of devotion, one must follow all the principles regulated by the authority of the spiritual master. The acceptance and rejection of things should always be in pursuance of the devotional principles, not that one can independently manufacture some idea of what should be accepted or rejected. The spiritual master as the visible manifestation of Krishna is necessary, therefore, to direct the devotee on behalf of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. I'm going to stop here. So Srila Prabhupada was uh, a great, uh, or, and actually uh, Bhakti Siddhanta, Srila Prabhupada's spiritual master, was also a great uh, pioneer in the use of modern technology for devotional service. Uh, Bhakti Siddhanta was the first Vaishnava sannyasi to ride in a car. He was the first to use a telephone, the first to use a, a, a dictaphone. In those days, they had dictaphones made with wax cylinders, and it had a big horn on it. You would speak into the horn, and it would record. In fact, the first, the first phonographs manufactured by Alexander Graham Bell uh, were thought to be used for voice recording. That was his idea. He had no idea that, that, that they would be used for music. They didn't really have a good enough a, a frequency response for music. So, uh, yeah, he was the first to, to do so many things. First to ride in a train. I mean, uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur actually even built a railroad to take him from his office in uh, Krishnanagar to his uh, cottage in Mayapur. You can still ride that train today. It's a really cool little narrow gauge steam train. And it goes between the, the Mayapur. You go from the Mayapur temple, the birthplace of Lord Chaitanya, you go down to the Jalangi River, where it goes it empties into the uh, Ganges. And um, Bhakti Vinod's Kutir is just there, within walking distance of that place. And then uh, there is a boat that goes across the river, or you can just swim across the river. It's not that wide. And uh, uh, then you, you walk up the bank on the other side, and there's the train station right there. <laughs> That's how Bhakti Vinod used to get to work. He'd commute to work on his own private railroad. <laughs> so this is our predecessor, spiritual masters. And of course, Srila Prabhupada was the first Vaishnava sannyasi to go overseas. And he went on a boat. And then later on, he traveled 12 times around the world by airplane. So just see. All these things are there. And now we're using the internet. We're traveling even faster. 
all over the world. Huh? This is lazy intelligence. Why not use it? It's there. Use it for Krishna. Huh? Take advantage. Yes, it can be misused, but so can a hammer. Huh? So can I can I can take a plate and instead of using it for Krishna, I can throw it at somebody. Huh? That's misusing it. So everything can be used for devotional service, even if it's ordinarily used for Maya. It can be adapted or engaged somehow or other in Krishna's devotional service. Uh, that's a fact. But you have to be expert. Devotee has to be expert. In the beginning, it requires expert guidance from the spiritual master. How to engage one's material uh, resources and abilities and energy in the devotional service. But once you learn the art, then you can engage everything. Uh, you can engage anything.